I know you as Vlad the Butcher. <laughs> you okay. know, I remember that, 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 I guess, photo shoot you had with all the blood on you. Yeah. You moved from there. Why, why get out of the mixtape game, number one, and then talk to me about the DVD game? Well, you got to understand, I moved to New York, and I was broke by that time. Like I was, I was actually homeless. Uh, I had a, a friend of mine who was a promoter and I became cool with his brothers. Um, and I was sleeping on the couch, uh, um, you know, in the Flatbush area in Brooklyn. And I was sleeping on their couch until they told me, hey, you can't sleep on this couch anymore. And then I, I had to scrape up enough money to get like a, a little studio apartment in, a, in Borough Park in Brooklyn once again. What but made I, you I go to New York? Why? Well, because what happened was after I shut down my business, I said, okay, I'm going to be a DJ, right? I'm like... I mean, I'm that doesn't come out of the clear blue sky. You have to tell it, like, yeah. connect yeah. the dots yeah. for me. Right. Well, you know, growing up with hip-hop, being a hip-hop kid, being a break dancer, falling in love with hip-hop and, and everything around it, um, you know, listening to hip-hop, exclusively the majority of my life right around in college uh, I started messing around with producing you know making beats mm -hmm. and you know I had an MPC 60 I had an SP 12 and you know an ASR 10 and I had different equipment I was making beats realized I was never really that good at one point I said I'm never going to be DJ Premier I'm never going to be Dr. Dre there's something within these guys that I don't have uh, and you know I've always felt like if I'm going to really devote my life to something I have to feel like I'll be one of the best in the world at it or otherwise I, being in the middle really doesn't feels like a waste of time to me. So I had to just, you know, after years and years of making beats in my bedroom and making a few little demos with local rappers, I just said, you know, this is, this is not, this is not for me. Uh, I'm not that great at it. I started DJing one night at a house party I was having. I just moved into a new house. The, the you know, the DJ had left his equipment. He was going to pick him up the next morning. I jumped on the turntables and I just, it just worked. Like I just got it right away. All those years of producing made me good at putting music together on, on turntables, right? And then from there, it started with the mixtapes. And um, once again, all the producing and working on whatever the Pro Tools thing was back then, I found a program where I could put my mixes together in a similar fashion. And it was like, yo, and I started, I was actually the, the first DJ to put a mixtape out, to release a mixtape on the internet. Like, this is very common these days. We're talking about 1998. It had never been done before. You know, when, when the history books will, will, might, might remember this. You know, they might not. But I put out my first mixtape. It was actually a Cypress Hill mixtape. You know, I just interviewed Be Real. And he told me how he remembers, you know, hearing that mixtape for the first time it got on his radar even though we would meet years later so i'm putting out these mixtapes on the internet and i'm doing blends because that's you know being a producer blends is sort of that that thing that that kind of uh yeah. you know drives and i started putting out these blends and i started djing in local clubs in uh in oakland and san francisco and after about a year of this and as i'm going more and more broke i'm like look if i want to really step it up and take it to, once again, the higher level, this is not gonna work in the Bay Area, I'm gonna have to move to New York. Gotcha. I'm gonna have to go to the Mecca of it, to where all the big mixtape DJs are with the Dirty Harrys and the Green Lanterns and the Funk, funk Flexes are and so forth. And also, you know, that's where all the, the biggest clubs are. Um, you know, I'm gonna be the biggest club DJ, I'm gonna be the biggest blend DJ, I'm, I'm gonna be the biggest reggae DJ. I had all types of different plans and in, in, in mind at the time, you know, I, I was DJ for Barry to Levy a bit at that time. And it was just all these different plans that I had. And I knew that it wasn't gonna happen in the town that I'm at. You know, mm -hmm. even though, you know, the Bay Area is not considered a small town, music wise it is. It's not it's not a, a Mecca, you know, it's not a, a you know, like a, a hub like New York or LA or, or Atlanta later on. Um, so I moved to New York and then it was just like trying to make my way, uh, backpack full of CDs, dropping it off with the Africans on consignment. Then coming back a week later and you forgot your tag so you can't get paid. And, you know, it was a very, it was a very rough time trying to figure out, when, you know, when my next meal is coming from, trying to figure out how I'm going to pay my rent, 
trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life because now I'm turning 30, right? Like when you met me, I, I think I was like 30. You know, I wasn't mm-hmm. like a young 21-year-old, 18-year-old that still had lots of years to, to work it out. So, you know, it was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? I, I got into the mixtapes, you know, that that Rap Phenomenon mixtape did well. Then the Rap Phenomenon 2, Phenomenon, Rap Phenomenon 2 did even better. And now I'm kind of in the game. You know, you start off and you create a, you know, I hired my man, you know, who I knew from UC Berkeley back then. And he is like responsible for shipping out mixtapes and sending them to mom and pop stores. And I have a little business that's now supporting me. But it's it's not a business. It's a hustle because what I'm selling is illegal. Right. I'm not clearing the copyrights on any of these songs. I'm not selling to, you know, Tower Records. I'm not even sure if they're around at that point, but no, to no major chains. I'm selling to mom and pop shops and I'm hoping that the feds don't kick my door down you know, and arrest me for copyright infringement. I'm having to put shit in other people's names and so forth. Um, And time is going on and CDs are going away. The mom and pop stores are closing down. So I'm having to create more product to make the money I made a month before. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? It's 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 a frustrating process and it's a stressful process. And you know, even though I'm getting some some DJ gigs internationally and so forth, I'm not like Flex that's getting 10 G's a show or Diplo that's getting 100 G's a show. Like, I'm that dude that's getting a couple hundred dollars, you know, to open up for the main DJ. I'm not famous. I'm not on the radio. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm independent. Uh, so as I'm struggling and trying to figure out what my next move is, uh, I do this project with QD3. Um, who who's doing the beef series at the time? You know, QD3 and, and for, for anybody in the audience who doesn't know who QD three is, QD three is the son of Quincy Jones. Mm-hmm. You know, one of many children. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Rashida Jones is one of his is his daughter. You know that that's his half sister. But he also you know he produced for Tupac a lot. You know, he did a bunch of songs for Tupac. He did a lot of songs for. Uh, Ice Cube and so forth and he had this DVD series called Beef and I made the mixtape for uh, I made two mixtapes f- for for the series as a as promotional items but I got to meet him we got to hang out and, and he's kind of explained to me how DVDs work and how documentaries work and so forth and I was like oh I didn't I didn't know that's how it worked I, I thought it was a bigger it required more money and required more equipment and required more rights and everything. And I'm like, I, I could do that. I think. <laughs> you know? So I just, I had this old raggedy, you know, um, mini DV camera and I just picked it up. And at the time I think I was, uh, me and game were, were talking about doing a, a mixtape project together. So it was like, well, how about we do a mixtape and a DVD? And he was like, all right, cool. So I'm following him around as he's doing his promo runs in New York. And then I'm going to his house in LA and we put out this DVD uh, called devil's advocate and it, and it does really well. Like it, it, it sells. So, so now I'm in the DVD game <laughs> and, you know, putting together video is kind of like putting together mixtapes, right. As, as you, you know, and like, and I'm already being, being a mixtape DJ, I'm already networking with artists and getting little, you know, drops and, and little mini interviews already. Um, you know, like I remember being in the uh, daddy's house, I think with Carl Thomas doing a, a very early interview. I don't even know where that thing is anymore, but, uh, you know, Kanye, I met up with Kanye during that era and did a, did an interview with him, uh, when he was in the studio with common working on, on commons album. And, it, you know, now, now I'm doing DVDs and, and DVDs are, uh, you know, it's a higher ticket item. Right. And it's not, is still sticking around a little more than, than mixtape than CDs, right? So what I started, are they selling you know, for at this point? What are the DVDs selling for? I think it was like retail was like fifteen dollars. You would get like maybe seven or eight wholesale. Okay. You know, um, and there was that spot in the Bronx uh, that would just pick up big box. You know, it's like I, I wouldn't have to ship them out anymore. There was this, this wholesaler in the Bronx that I would just bring cases to. He'd cut me a check, and then you know rinse and repeat. And, and I'm doing that. Uh, you know, as I'm still DJing and, and doing some mixtapes and here and there and so forth. And then the DVDs start going away. <laughs> and, and here I am in the same boat once again that I was with the mixtapes 
where I'm having to put out more DVDs to make the money I made last month. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.